Good evening. Welcome to our Music in the Schools Month concert, part one. Um, some people ask, why do we call it this? And this started a long tradition. Um, so for more than 30 years, uh, March has been officially designated by the National Association for Music Education uh, for the observance of Music in Our Schools Month, uh, this time of year uh, when music education becomes the focus of schools across the nation. Uh, the purpose of Music in Our Schools Month is to raise awareness of the importance of music education for all children and to remind citizens that school is where all children should have access to music. Uh, music in our Schools Month is an opportunity for music teachers to bring uh, their music programs to the attention of the school and the community and to display the benefits that school music brings to all students of all ages. Um, so we think it's important to highlight that and then bring both band and choir together um, and see what, what they're doing across the hallway, so to speak. Um, so this is part one. Part two is on Thursday um, with our Belvoir treble choir, our uh, mixed concert choir, and Zephyr Wind Ensemble. Um, we want to say a couple of thank yous. Um, thank you to SCC TV um, who, uh, for our live stream tonight and recording. It's so nice that we can get our what we do here out to the community and to people who may live not near enough to be able to see what all these students are able to do on the stage this evening. Um, for the choir, our theme for this concert has usually been uh, like world music or something that brings the world together through music. Um, and you'll see that theme throughout our, 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 our pieces. Um, usually with our Music in the Schools Month uh, concert, we also display art from our visual arts department. Um, and this year, uh, the photography you might have seen in the foyer um, is the AP photography students in Miss Wilma's class um, are displaying some of their work. So if you'd like to peruse that, um, you, sh you should be uh, welcome to do so. And first is Eliana reading about our first piece. Right. To stars, oops. <laughs> to stars off tonight, we're singing a song that was originally born as a game using imitating sounds and vocables. Rowned by Josu Elberdin, this piece has colorful harmonies and a mixture of stomps, claps, and pats. It starts with a three-part harmonic bass under a four-voice canon. So, without further ado, here's our first piece, Malaka Tumba. Thank you. 
Yes, of a traditional Macedonian folk song. <laughs> this song celebrates the beauty and richness of Macedonia, the homeland of the community it represents, and their deep love for it. Macedonian folk music is a diverse and vibrant musical tradition that honors the heritage of North Macedonians. It is traditionally performed at traditional celebrations such as weddings or festivals, and it plays a vital role in the cultural identity of Macedonians. Enjoy Tat Kovina. Heartbeat is a mix of different, origin different genres like pop, gospel, and the blues. Its original lyrics are spoken in English and traditional Shona text from South Africa, which is commonly spoken in Zim Zimbabwe. It talks about unity and how no matter what your differences you have, what truly matters is what's in your heart or in your heartbeat. This is our final piece. Enjoy Heartbeat.
Hey, uh, I'm Alex. I'm Forrest. And uh, this is the Zephyr Percussion Ensemble. We are a group of percussionists that play percussion. <laughs> we're... Songs? Yeah, so we're playing... When do we, how much do we meet? Oh, oh we, meet, we meet during flex time most of the time. Uh, usually Wednesdays, once a week, yeah. Sometimes it's in the early morning. I like have to wake up. <laughs> so the first song that we're playing is this really, uh, it's a very sad and somber piece. It's called Comic Relief, and most of, most of the music comes from clicking on sticks and from clapping. So please save your tears because it's, it's pretty tough. And then the second song is Beef Brisket. Uh, it is a, a drumline piece, so that's going to be snare drum, bass drum, cymbals, and quints. And uh, our last song is called March a la Turk, which is actually a melodic piece with uh, featuring mallets and all the sort of percussion things you see in the back. All right, enjoy. <laughs>
it's Alex again. And I'm Terry. And uh, this is the Zephyr Wind Orchestra, or as we call it, ZWO. And it consists mostly of sophomores and freshmen, but there are many juniors and seniors that sort of act as mentors or like sort of musical co coaches, as per to speak. And they're going to play. The first song they will be playing is Africata by Quincy Hilliard. Uh, Mr. Hilliard was able to meet with the band last week over Zoom and answer some questions and help them with their playing. Uh, the piece Africata explores the rhythm, rhythms and sounds of Africa. Quincy Hilliard uses some unusual percussion sounds as well as clapping and pencils and metal objects hitting stands. Um, in the middle, there's a beautiful slow lyrical section, and then the main theme returns to build a powerful and exciting conclusion. Please welcome the Zephyr Wind Orchestra with conductor Miss Goucher. <laughs> Thank you. 
The next piece played by Zero will be Hymn to the Dawn by Kimberly Archer. This piece challenged the group greatly in that it required a different style of playing that we aren't used to. It is slow, lyrical, and challenging due to the need to listen to each other and count slowly. There's also numerous time signature changes which also make it a challenge. Where are we on this thing again? <laughs> right. I can't read, I swear. Oh, this piece was composed in memory of Charlie Carter, staff arranger for the Florida State University Marching Chiefs and one of the composer's first composition teachers. Charlie became seriously ill while composer Archer was in graduate school, and Mrs. Archer was reluctant to face the severity of his illness and hesitated to call him in the hospital. As a result, he passed away before she had a chance to say goodbye to him. Although the title suggests moving forward, the music is meant to reflect the unresolved nature of composer Archer's relationship with her teacher. Also, Goucher was, let's keep this secret, but Goucher told me not to say this, but the next, the next piece, she has like a special outfit going on, so let's all act like it's new and stuff, but she's gonna look very different for the next song. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sit back and enjoy the beautiful sounds and meanings behind him to the dawn.
Our next piece is written by Vince Gossi and is titled The Temple of Guan Yu. Guan Yu was a successful military general who lived during the Han Dynasty and was respected for his loyalty and righteousness. Though he died in 220 CE, he is still worshipped today in the many temples that have been named after him. The largest, built in 589 CE in Guan Yu's hometown, still stands today. This piece captures the mystery of an ancient empire and recalls the grandeur of a moment to a hero long past. And speaking of heroes, this piece is going to be conducted by a hero within our own Madhubidai band program. He is our student conductor and has been learning basic conducting from Ms. Goucher and his future college conducting professor from Gustavus, Dr. James Practic Miller, and he has been rehearsing us through the learning process. Please welcome to the stage our conductor, Senior Forrest Olson. <laughs> has learned that conducting is not just about we're not just we're not just up here waving our arms around there's a lot more to it and um, he's off to a really good start and I'm really excited for an incredible music education career for him you'll see him again in a future concert doing that so give us a minute The final piece of the night was written by one of our favorites, Randall D. Standridge. This piece is titled Bees. Bees is part of, a lar of, a, of the larger work entitled The Garden Suite, which also includes the works Frogs, March of the Arachnids, and Flowers. Bees is inspired by a variety of sources, such as Rimsky Korsakov's Flight of the Bumblebee, and the variety of the Warner Brothers and Disney cartoons that Standridge watched as a youngster, whose soundtracks were full of amazing color, comedy, and wit. 
Thank you for t coming to tonight's concert. We want to invite all of you back again for Thursday night at 7 p.m. for part two of our music in the school's concert celebrations, where you will hear from Belvoir Concert Choir and the Zephyr Wind Ensemble. We will also encourage you to donate anything that you are willing to donate to the band and choir programs in the donation basket out in the foyer. Money helps us bring in guests, supplies, food on nights where we have to be here late or come in early, and help us towards the Disney trip that the band and choir will be taking next December. Watch for more information to come on that in the months to come. Please enjoy Standridge's Bees.